Today, I want to talk about mucus. Mucus is one of the unsung heroes of our bodies. It does not get enough credit, and it's super important when it comes to both your immune health and your nutrition. So here's the deal. Our bodies are laid out in a series of tubes and tracts. We have a respiratory tract, right? We breathe in through our nose, it comes into the lungs. That entire respiratory airway is lined with a layer of mucus. Our digestive tract is the same thing. When we eat food and we chew and it goes down the esophagus into the stomach and the intestines, there is a mucus lining that is covering that entire tract. And the reason our body does this and the reason we have mucus is because mucus is kind of like a combination of jello and glue. It's hydrating, it has a lot of water in it, which is good and nourishing for these tissues, but it's also sticky because it binds stuff up. When we're breathing in all sorts of viruses, bacteria, fungi, pathogens, the mucus in our nose actually catches and binds those things so it doesn't really get deeper and infect us. And our digestive tract, this layer of mucus, actually helps protect us from having things go into circulation. Now, this is basically the function of mucus, and it's amazing. Now, what happens, though, is when we get exposed to certain things that we have some kind of allergy or sensitivity to, what does our body do? We produce more mucus. So if you're someone who has any kind of seasonal allergies, I don't need to tell you this. You know when there's lots of pollen in the air or something like that, your body produces a lot of mucus because to your immune system, it views that pollen and the proteins that are in that pollen as something foreign that it doesn't want. So it upregulates the production of mucus through these things called goblet cells to basically stick to all those uh, proteins so they don't get into the body. It's a defense mechanism. Now this is a little bit of a preamble to get into my main point of this video, is mucus is very important to pay attention to, not just with seasonal allergies and colds and sicknesses, but with your eating. Are there foods in your diet right now that are creating an immune response that are producing mucus? I want you to start to pay attention to this. Because for many people, and myself included, there are certain foods that you may eat that you'll find that after you eat these foods that you may find like you have a scratchy throat, maybe you feel like you have a stuffy nose, maybe you feel more pressure and headaches in your head. These are mucus production reactions because to your body, when you eat certain foods, those proteins are viewed as foreign, much like a pollen would be viewed as foreign, and your body produces mucus to try to bind that stuff up. And I have the fundamental belief that for our bodies and for optimal nutrition, we should be eating foods that our bodies don't have a sensitivity to and certainly not an allergy to. So if we can start to pay attention to the kind of foods that stimulate mucus production and maybe get those out of the diet, then we can really improve our health. And there are a lot of people, particularly in the 1900s and the early 1900s, that really believed in this concept of a mucusless diet. The idea that mucus was a huge problem in the body, and if you have too much mucus, it, it backs things up and you want to reduce the amount of mucus in the diet. And I think there's a lot of uh, credence and premise to what they were sharing, although they may have been a little extreme in their approach. But basically, here are some of the common foods on the board back behind me, and I'm going to read them out for you. We have things like dairy, corn, soy, wheat, Fried foods, alcohol, coffee, sugary processed stuff. These are common mucus product producing foods. They may not produce mucus for you, any given one of these, but some of them may. We're all pretty unique. We have these amazing unique immune systems. And the take home message here is start to pay attention to foods that may produce mucus for you. And mucus is not the only symptom that your body has a sensitivity to some kind of food. Um, there's also like gas, bloating, changes to your poops, whether they're consistency or their frequency. There's body aches and stuff like this. But pay attention to these signs because many people find they're eating these low-grade uh, sensi sensitivity foods that lead to inflammation and mucus production and your health will absolutely improve if you can get these out of your diet. And what you also find is for a certain period of time when you're trying to heal the body and get healthier, eliminating many of these foods makes people feel substantially better. And then you can start to reintroduce foods and figure out what your body really, really reacts to. Now, right now, there are a lot of food sensitivity tests out there that you can order where you can get some kind of kit. You can give them a sample of your either your blood or your saliva, and they can tell you that if you have a sensitivity to certain kinds of foods. And personally, I'm not a huge fan of those, and I'll tell you why. And I'm going to get a little bit into some of the science and specifics of it. What those kits are measuring is a type of immunoglobulin produced by your immune system called IgG, which is like a memory immunoglobulin. It's the type of thing that your immune system produces when it's been exposed to something. It's like kind of like a tagger. It's like we've seen this before. And what it's measuring is the amount of IgG you have in response to different kinds of foods. So they may run you through a panel of like 100 to plus different kinds of foods, and they basically show you how much IgG do you have to any given one of those foods. Well, foods you eat very frequently that you don't necessarily have a sensitivity to 
could have high IgG levels because your body's like, we see strawberries all the time, high IgG. So it's not enough to say I took this food sensitivity test and I have this here and I'm automatically should be avoiding these types of foods. I think it could maybe be like a heuristic that you can start to like explore with, but it's not something that you base your whole uh, life around because oh, unfortunately what happens is many people remove so many foods because they're triggered by high IgG levels on this little piece of paper, but you actually don't have a problem. Your immune system just produces lots of IgG because it sees this food a lot. So there's something to consider. I think the gold standard, and I think a lot of like really um, world-class allergists and stuff like this who really do this for a full-time living believe that you can do things that, to check out allergies like an actual skin prick test. Now that's testing a different kind of allergy, like an IgE mediated allergy, that's immunoglobulin E, and that's like for a true allergy reaction. Like some people have shellfish or peanut allergies, that's a little bit different, but skin prick test for sure. But when it comes to sensitivities instead of full-blown allergies, it's really just paying attention cleaning your system out, eating a cleaner diet and reintroducing and just watching what kinds of things you have. And if you can get to the point where the majority of time for your body, you can breathe through your nose without having lots of mucus, your poops are regular and good and don't require uh, a lot of wiping, I believe you have a pretty healthy clean system. If two of those things are off, if your gut is off and you either have gas bloating or bad poops or you're constantly stuffed up in the nose, there is work that you can do to your health to make it even better. When you have a clean respiratory tract, a clean digestive tract, and you're generally feeling good and energetic all the time, it's a huge indicator that your health is on point. And these foods, just like environmental allergens, are a big component in mucus production. Mucus is your friend. It's your body's way of saying, let's trap this stuff. And if you're constantly inflaming it because of these things, I recommend you get them out of your diet. So little idea I wanted to share with you today. I believe this is kind of one of those finer details um, that you can really dial in as you get deeper into your health and fitness journey. Pay attention to the kind of foods. And these are some of the main culprits. So if you have any suspicions, I challenge for you from um, this episode really is just to pull it out of your diet, see how you feel, and then reintroduce it and see if you get symptoms. Thank you, my friend. I'm grateful for your time today. I hope you found this valuable and I look forward to seeing you around our blog, our website, our YouTube channel, our podcast, and all the other amazing things we have for you here at the Fit Father Project and the Fit Mother Project. This is Dr. A signing off. I'll talk to you very soon.